I keep meaning to mention this. It's been about six weeks. Um, I've started up Lelujo 2 again. I don't think I've mentioned it on this channel, but if you are interested in seeing me play Minecraft, Super Mario Maker, GeoGuessr, the Detroit series has been re-released over there, or any other non-Football Manager games, the link is down in the description. Go and subscribe to Lelujo 2. Um, I'm doing sort of three videos a week over there at the moment, but if interest picks up, number of videos will pick up too so i know a lot of you liked the non-football manager stuff we used to do over here this is just a football manager channel now it has been for about a year non-football manager stuff over on Illusio 2 it would be delightful to see some of you come and join me over there now we should start this new season Hello and welcome to episode 190 of It's Coming Home. I'm Kev and coming up on today's episode we have the start of the new Premier League season. We're away against Fulham and at home against Southampton with our newly formed squad. Um, so for the first time in a long time we've had a roughly break-even summer on transfers. Um, I mean it, actually two years ago we made a transfer profit. Um, but there have been a number of summers where we've really, really spent a lot of money, um, which has left us in a bit of a financial pickle. As you can see, there's a bit of debt at the club. Um, I don't think we're showing us insecure yet. No, we're not. We're doing OK. Because there's obviously a lot of money that's going to start flowing in now the season started with Champions League prize money and Premier League prize money and TV money and attendance money. So it's not quite as bad as it looks right now. That should be the lowest point it gets to. Ignore that my projection thinks it's going to get much worse. But we are being a little bit more financially prudent. He says spending £4 million on, a week on wages at a club that doesn't own its own ground. We'll be fine. Let's go and play Fulham. And this is the team we're going to put out there to do exactly that. And the big thing you'll notice is Powell's back in goal. Beckart, the new goalkeeper, played in the Community Shield. My thoughts are James Powell has just won every goalkeeping award there is last season. Beckart needs to force him out of the team. It shouldn't just be automatic. So Powell is going to get the nod to start the season off in goal. Nothing to do with the fact that Beckart didn't miraculously win us the the penalty shootout at the end of the last video. Pfft, nothing to do with that at all. So we've got Powell in goal. A back four of Candemil, Baron, Lee and Mayer. Zipancic and Cristiano in midfield. Sorelio, Costa and Goff behind Mira up front. And there we have our packed out, stacked bench. Including the new super sub, Ben Young. Who can just come on for any of those players. It's going to be so handy having him knocking around in this squad this season. He's going to play... 38 Premier League games without starting any of them, I imagine. But we had that discussion when he signed. You knew that's what he was signing up for. <laughs> I hope. Right, here you go. We're the favourites for this. Excellent. It's going to be interesting to see how he responds to it as a player because he's come in on a contract saying he's going to be a rotation player. Now, if he never starts a game but plays appears in 30 plus Premier League games like he could appear in 40 or 50 games this season and maybe start a small handful of them because obviously he will start occasionally um, if we're doing rotation and stuff but he'll probably appear in 40 or 50 games in all competitions is that going to be enough to satisfy him that he is being used as a rotation player or do they do it based on the number of games they scout we it's the Ben Young experiment and we'll see how it turns out at the end of the season or at whatever point he demands a transfer because he doesn't ever start games. But fingers crossed it doesn't come to that. And Powell is giving me a good reason there for getting Becker into this team sooner rather than later because um, he should have saved that. that was, that's some poor goalkeeping there. Let's look at it from the other side. Um, so Fulham working the ball around into a shooting position. Um, then they squeeze the shot off. Pal gets a hand to it, but it's a floppy hand that doesn't actually change the trajectory of the ball at all. I need to check out the dynamics page because after the uh, after the disappointment of the charity shield, and now we're down against Fulham on the first day of the season, I'd like to think I haven't ruined dynamics by by selling Saidi and Yamin, but maybe I have. Maybe they were key players because it's not. We've had much bigger upheaval over the summer most seasons for the last four or five years but we do seem to be struggling to get started this year after such a good finish to last last year winning ourselves the double so hopefully this is just a little bit of a blip and we'll go on and beat Fulham in this game in fact there's an open goal there and I don't even know who's tucked it away Zipancic 
but I think it's it's going over to the little telly. Has it been disallowed? It has been disallowed. I mean, there were four or five home shirts in the six-yard box and no Fulham shirts to be seen. So I can understand how that's been given as offside, but it's a little bit confusing what Fulham are up to. I guess they're playing an offside trap, which also includes their goalkeeper pushing on beyond our players, which seems mad. Right, Powell plays it to Baron. Baron back to Powell again. Powell decides to switch it all the way over to Goff, who does brilliantly to win his header, beat his man, play it into Mira. Mira slots Cirillo in, and that should have been a goal. Uh, the build-up play was superb. Um, but there's Costa in again from the cross from from uh, Candemil, and we've forced a corner, and it is Goff to take. It's going to be an in-swinger to that far post. Mira can't quite get a hold of it, and then gets clattered, but apparently not a foul. There's no justice in the world. Um, whoever that was, he looked like he was already tired. We need to check on the conditioning. I think it's Lee. It looked like he was tired. So perhaps he's picked up a knock. Mira is in here, though. Hits the post. We've had some chances today. Um, I don't know why he was bent over with his hands on his knees. He looks fine there. Um, perhaps, I, perhaps, I, perhaps he wasn't even doing it. Perhaps I imagined it. There is Lee. Collecting the ball nicely. Calmly plays it forward to Cristiano, who plays it across to Zipancic and Costa. And Zipancic again. And now Sorelio has come deep and inside. Plays it forward to Mira. Zipancic picks it up. And Zipancic forces a save. I tell you what, Zipancic is really pushing on to become the £93 million midfielder that we paid for now. Um, gone from being a bit of a rotation player when he first arrived to he's comfortably the best midfielder at the club now. And there he is again with a solid tackle. Zapancic is everywhere. Although apparently he's flitting between anxious and frustrated because he's playing out of his skin and no one else around him seems to be aware there's a football match going on. Candemil now with the cross and Goff is in. And there's your equaliser just before half time. Big John Goff scoring the 100th goal of his career. It's a lovely cross from Candemil as well. Um, but this is the advantage of having a giant winger on that far side when the crosses do come over and he cuts inside. You always back him to win his header, even against big Premier League centre-backs. And that's exactly what he's done there. And that is a perfectly timed equaliser. And hopefully I can shake them into life at half-time. And we can go out in the second half and do what everyone would expect us to do. And go on and win this game. So let's assertively say, um, I'm far from pleased with what I've just seen. Everyone's fired up, apart from Cirillo, who missed the chance of the half. He, uh, he he needs to watch his back. We've got plenty of players who can come in and play in his position now. Um, but we have a corner. 48 minutes on the clock. Zipancic is there. Hits the post. How many times have we hit the frame of the goal today? We've had four clear-cut chances now to Fulham's none. We just need to get a little bit more clinical. Um, we are playing very well. So I'm not as worried about the dynamics as I was before. We're just having a bit of an off day in front of goal, it seems. Um, Lee's been fouled here. And now it's Costa taking the free kick from deep. Plays it square to Zapancic, who finds Cristiano. This is, seems a bit of a waste of a free kick at the moment. But the fact the highlight's still going suggests we have a plan. Maya cuts it into Costa again. And there's Sorelio, and it's just wide. We actually worked Costa into a beautiful position there for a little bit of patient build-up play. It's just a shame that Sorelio, once again... Handed a chance on a plate, doesn't quite finish it off. Cirilio, Mira, Zapancic, in fact. None of them doing particularly well for their ratings so far. So I think that's more to do with the fact they've all missed big chances. And that's that affects ratings more than anything, really. Missing big chances um, and scoring goals are the two big things that push you one way or the other, in my experience. There's Costa. It falls to Cirilio. Cirilio... I don't know what he's trying to do there, but Costa's picked the ball up again, plays it back to Maya, to Cristiano. Someone get a crossover. There is Mira. Cirillo in space again, and this time does score, and it's 2 1. We've, I mean, we've gone about this the hard way. 32 shots in the first 66 minutes of this game, five clear cut chances, and we finally have taken the lead. And hopefully, the floodgates open from here because the stats tell you we've all played very, very well. We just don't have very much to show for it so far. Um, but we are going to make our, tr our traditional 70th minute changes. Zapancic um, is going to come off. Um, and we're going to bring... Do we bring on Mendes or Ben Young in midfield? I guess Mendes makes more sense. We need to, especially with Young around, we need to make sure we have Sloma on the bench for situations like this. Because we don't really want to be playing Mendes deep too often. Um, especially when I now want to bring him on for Costa. Hold on, let's rethink this. Let's leave Zapancic on. 
I want Mendes to come on in his actual position and then Thor's going to come on for Mira and that's the change I actually want to make. Zipancic can stay on. Although his rating's not great, like I say, I think that's more to do with the fact that he missed a couple of big chances. But from what I've seen, Zipancic is having a good game. So I'm backing myself rather than the game. This is a worry. What have I become? Um, right, who have we got on the bench? Flager, Herve, Young. Young, I need to get on. I think we'll just get Young on for Zipancic. That's exactly what he's there for, to come on and play in whatever position he needs to play in. An elite striker for a world-class midfielder. There you go. See, Ben Young's not not bad. It, managing England, I kind of, I have a view of him that he's not great because there was four or five England strikers better than him. But the fact, that's a great save from Powell, by the way, the fact that he's only 24 and described as an elite striker shows just how blessed England are with uh, with attacking talent. And Ben Young, he's going to do a very good job for us this year. I'm, I'm feeling James Burgess vibes. For those of you who've been around on the channel for a little while, um, we've brought him in as a striker. He's played his first couple of games in midfield. Is he going to become England captain playing in central midfield? Which we all know from the England series is a position where if he can convert himself to a central midfielder, he'll go and play 80 times for England in central midfield and just be a first name on the team sheet. He's never going to make it in as a striker though, so... I think it's probably in his best interests to become a central midfielder, both at club and international level. Right, let's go and play Southampton and hopefully not make as much hard work of it as we just have against Fulham. One change for the Southampton game then. Baron has picked up an injury. He's going to be out for the next three weeks with a twisted ankle. So Hervé comes in for him. And in fact, let's do a second change and put Mira back to being a complete forward again. The, the comment section has just gone wild with excitement at seeing... Uh, Seeing Mira playing as a complete forward again. If that doesn't work, then Thor is ready to come straight back into the team. In fact, Thor is wanted by Liverpool. We turned down an offer for James Powell from Real Madrid on deadline day. Or not there. I guess it wasn't. Because our deadline day had happened. Theirs is still going on. So that could still happen. They offered like £60 million for him. I said, give me £100 million and you can have him. They withdrew. But if we do get a £100 million offer from Real Madrid for James Powell before the Spanish transfer window closes, we will sell him and go with Beckart that way. But um, at the moment, Powell keeps his place in the side. Sloma has graduated up to sit on the bench as well because we do need a proper central midfielder down on the bench, not just Young and Mendes able to play there if they need to. I think I need to get a little bit smarter with this bench selection. But really, I would like, perhaps we don't even need the goalkeeper, I'd like Mendes or Drame on that bench as well, because then we've got cover for every single position. Goff can go back and cover right back. Aleph can come on at left back. I guess Aleph is the one who's a luxury, because he can only come on and play one position. Flager as cover for uh, for um, Goff. Thor can play there or there. Juranovic covers the two centre-backs. Sloma, the two central midfielders. Young, everyone here. So there is cover for every position. But it would just be nice to have a proper, rather than it just injury cover, a proper alternative option to Costa in the shape of Drame or Mendes. But I guess I guess injuries and suspensions will force us into doing that quite regularly anyway. It's not going to be often that we have an entire like pick of the bench available to us like we have right now. So it's a it's a nice problem to have. Oh, we've got too many good players. We can't fit them all on the bench. Woe is me. Candamil from range. And it goes just wide from Candamil. And uh, I don't want another day of struggling to beat a team we should be much better than. Um, but they've gone 1-0 up against us. Or have they? Um, we're going over to the little telly. And I think this is being disallowed. It has been disallowed. Mercier, of course, is the striker for Southampton after his £38 million move to go there in the summer. So he's going to have a point to prove coming back to play against home so soon. Hopefully he will fail to prove it. But I mean, he wouldn't look at the bench. There's not a chance Mercier would have been anywhere near it today. So it was absolutely the right decision to let him go for the price that we let him go for. We made a good profit on him having spent a few years developing him into a player that presumably is going to ruin our afternoon today. Zapancic now plays it to Cristiano. Cristiano back to Zapancic. Costa 
has dropped deep to offer an option to him. And there is Costa. Mayer's out wide, ready to whip a crossover. Instead, plays it into Costa, who's done brilliantly and scores. That was a lovely goal. Rather than just whipping crosses over for Mira to head over or hit the post with, we decided to just mix things up a bit, do something a little bit different. It's all led by Costa. Costa starts the move, gets himself into a pocket of space, goes round his man brilliantly, does get a helpful deflection. Um, but I think it was probably going into that top corner even without the deflection. We have to give him the benefit of the doubt because he did so well to basically do what he's supposed to do as the number 10 in this team, get a hold of the ball and create a chance for him himself, which is awesome. Sorelio now loses out on the edge of the area and it's cleared forward. Um, so I mean, there was no one there chasing. Sorelio is now on a yellow card. I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment. If he, if he starts to look like he might be in danger, Thor can always come on for him and Mira can drop back out to the left wing again, which is definitely something I'm considering doing if we continue to struggle to take our chances. Because once again today, 20 shots already, 10 of them on target, 70% possession, we're only 1-0 up. Thor is a very clinical finisher. Thor will score more goals. We saw last year, Thor scores more goals per game than Mira does. So if we continue to dominate games but struggle to apply the finish, then Mira either being dropped or Cirillo being dropped and Mira moving out to the left-hand side is the obvious thing to do. So Cirillo and Mira combine here for a goal because neither of them want to be dropped. Mira did his very best to mess that up. Um, he had, uh, really, when the ball came through from Cirillo, it was a perfect pass. Um, Mira took one touch and probably should have put it in the back of the net. So there's his touch. Probably should have, it was a very heavy touch, should have just hit it first time from there. But very heavy touch that their keeper doesn't deal with properly and gives Mira a second opportunity to save face. And he does, so we're 2-0 up just before half time. Look at the state of those stats though. 66% possession, 25 shots. We should be more than 2-0 up. It's the same story as we had in the Fulham game. And I think it is, both Thor and Young are sat there on the bench just grinning ready to take their opportunity. They'll get a chance to get into this team. And if either of them gets that opportunity and starts scoring goals more prolifically than Mira, then they stay in the team. Because as much as I like Mira, as much as he's a lad, we picked up age 18 and developed ourselves. If he's not going to score enough goals for us, then I've got no issue with sticking him out wide or dropping him altogether for our two but, I mean, one more prolific, one kind of untried in a decent team striker. Uh, but Young scored on his debut for England, from what I remember. Right, Powell plays it forward to Cristiano. Cristiano out wide to Goff, who Goff's always going to win a header against a fullback. And he did again there. And it's Costa playing it forward to Goff again, looking to get into a crossing position, beats his man, but then puts Mayer in a world of trouble that Mayer actually did quite well to not end up getting himself sent off as a result of. Um, did well to actually make the tackle without giving away a foul. Um, but it is time to make a couple of changes. Cirillo is the obvious one to come off. Thor on for him. Um, Thor goes back to being an advanced forward. Mira can be the inside forward on that left-hand side. And Cristiano can come off for Sloma, who makes his Premier League debut today, I think. In fact, was he on loan at a Premier League team last year? He was at low. He played half a season for Burnley in the Premier League last year. So his Premier League debut for home. Obviously, he's already played in the Charity Shield as well. Um, and we're looking at Candemil, who again is he's begging me to replace him with Aleph. If he wasn't our captain, Aleph would always would already be our starting left back. But the more times Candemil has a poor performance like he has done today. The uh, the more likely it is that uh, explosive fullback um, Aleph is going to force his way into this team as our regular starting left back, leaving Candemil to wonder what on earth he did wrong because he's been awesome for five years. He's now a British citizen as well, and um, he got his citizenship in the summer, so we no longer have to worry about work permits for Candemil either, which is very handy. But of course, Aleph is homegrown at club now, so. Anything Candemil can do, Alif can do just a little bit better, it seems, which I'm not going to complain about that at all. I like having two very good left backs. So, despite making hard work of it, we have picked up two wins to start our Premier League season. We've got ourselves up 
where we're supposed to be at this stage of the season. Um, there you go, with our already qualified for the Europa League thing because the FA Cup final was so late. That's a lovely little glitch. But if we only end up in the Europa League, I'm going to be very disappointed. And we will be back tomorrow, probably with our first Champions League game. Or maybe our second one. It depends which one's most interesting out of those two. Um, but we're not going to get the draw today because I think it takes place towards the end of the month. But if you have enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.